What's up guys, this is Chris from Honest Outlaw here, and today we're coming at you with another thousand run review. This time, we're gonna be looking at the Langdon Tactical 92 Elite. Now, as always, before we do that, I wanna mention my patient supporters, thank you guys very much. It's because of you we can afford guns and gear and all kinds of cool stuff on the channel. If you wanna support the channel, that's the best way to do it. Just go to the link in the description. Also in that link is a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS, they could really use your support. It's a youth shelter near and dear to my heart, so please go down and click that link and donate to those kids. Now, before we go any further with this review, I do wanna mention that I did get this from Langdon Tactical for review. I don't get to keep it or anything like that. I got to shoot it and I get to send it back when I'm done. The Langdon Tactical RDO is essentially a upgraded Beretta 92 or M9 or whichever model you particularly choose. He does PX4 Storms, lots of other cool stuff. This one here is a Beretta M9 with a five inch barrel. Uh, it is a double single action pistol with an aluminum frame uh, full size that has a capacity of 15 to 17 rounds depending on which magazines that you use. Now, traditionally, uh, the Beretta 92 is, has an amazing track record, has lots of good features, accuracy, reliability, uh, but what Langdon likes to do is try to turn, on, turn all of those up to 10. Uh, they are the first company that had put a red dot on a Beretta 92. It's a little bit more complicated on this model than it is on some other models. They figured it out by switching a couple of the internal parts, five or six I do believe. And then about a year later, Beretta figured out how to do it themselves. I have to assume they had a lot of inspiration from Langdon since Langdon actually did it first. So that's the first thing we're gonna look at here. We're gonna look at the red dot mount I have. I have the RMR mount on there and I have have a Trijicon 1 MOA SRO. Now if you do buy this gun, it doesn't come with the optic, but it does come obviously with the mount. Another thing that they do to the Elite Series is gonna be the MP3 coating, which makes the gun very, very slick. Now that's one of the things that you notice right away. It's just how easy it is to run the slide, how slick the action is, how just amazingly smooth all the parts are, and it's because all of the important parts are actually coated with MP3 coating, so they stay slicker longer, and that really is a huge benefit that I used to actually kind of discount. Not only is the Beretta M9 a very reliable pistol normally, but the MP3 coating has a tendency to make it not only more reliable, but more reliable with lower powered ammunition as well. Uh, we did shoot a good portion of some of my competition and some of my remanufactured ammunition through this uh, with no problem but one. It did have a light primer strike, but I have to assume that was the ammunition because we had no other issue other than that. And it was with my famously unreliable Phoenix remanufactured ammunition. So the MP3 coating is a huge uh, benefit to me, and the red dot certainly is as well. But the star of the show, in my personal opinion, is this guy right here. This is the trigger, if you're unfamiliar with firearms. This trigger is so good, so good. Here. It is an extremely light seven-ish, six-pound double action trigger pull, which allows you to carry appendix safely because you can put your hand over the hammer and you can draw the gun and put the gun away without having to worry about any accidental discharges, which is pretty nice because I like my I like my junk, my wife likes my junk, and I don't want to shoot it the hell off. So I like the fact that you can run double action as a safety, and then when you pull the gun out, you can switch to single action, or after you fire the first double action round, the slide uh, uh, reciprocates, pushes the hammer back, and then you have this unbelievable reset with this unbelievable single action trigger. This is the only Beretta I've ever felt that rivals a 2011, not only in trigger pull, as you can see here, we got like less than a three pound trigger. Very, very nice. But the rate of fire is increased dramatically because of this. That is the reset. That is so good, especially by comparison to my other M9s, that when I first shot this gun, it was hard to believe. That really does increase your rate of fire a great deal, and it does increase your accuracy a great deal as well, because you're not fighting that trigger uh, near as much as you would be otherwise. And since the Beretta M9 is a pretty accurate gun and a pretty fast gun to begin with, this really does take it to the next level. Try that 10-inch plate. Get on, we really are. 
Now, some of the other things he does is he does a complete dehorn treatment, which you don't really notice until you don't have one. Uh, the snag-free overall surface area of the gun makes it very easy to carry. Um, he also adds some of his grips on there, which are cool, but honestly, if this was my gun, I was gonna keep it, I put on some lock grips. I like lock grips a lot, I like all the texture, and uh, it's a little bit slicked over. Now don't get me wrong, it's designed that way for a carry gun, uh, but a big full size 32 ounce gun like this, I wanna have as much traction as possible because I'm probably gonna race with it. And this would be a really good gun for that. It'd be a fun gun for carry optics, it would be an amazing gun for home defense, and it does certainly flex in a concealed carry if you already carry a gun the size of an M9. Uh, this is obviously the same silhouette. Now we have some backup flat black sights on there, which I like a lot because it doesn't impede with the red dot at all. Sometimes they'll put night sights for backup sights and it kind of gets in the way of the red dot sight picture, whereas this is a super clear uh, sight picture. So all of the upgrades definitely have their merit. I suppose the real question to you is, is it worth it? Because the guns comes out between $1,600 and $2,200, and that is a lot more than a standard M9. You can get an M9 for around five, six, seven hundred bucks these days, depending on where you're at and what year it is. Upgraded models like the Beretta 92X Performance come in right around this price point, and I would certainly rather have this than that, to be honest with you. This is way better. Uh, this has a better trigger than the 92X Performance, and it's a lot lighter as well. They, they made that gun unbelievably heavy, and I'm not sure if that's because people just stopped learning how to control recoil, or maybe you want to transition a pistol that's freaking 55 ounces, but I don't. I like to have fast draws, I like to have fast transitions, I like to have a gun I could, if I'm gonna use it for competition, it has to sort of be able to flex in either home defense or concealed carry for me as well, because I like a gun that does a lot of things. And this one does. Uh, you could shoot this no problem in any competition, you could also use it for home defense and you could carry it. So it gives you a lot of options, and especially for a gun at this price point, you want a lot of options because you don't wanna have to buy a $2,000 carry pistol and then a freaking $2,000 competition pistol right after that. So I like this gun. Uh, uh, because it's gonna appeal to a lot of the original M9 owners. It's just gonna give you more performance. But again, it does cost money. Uh, it costs money for them to do these upgrades, so it obviously makes sense that it's gonna cost you money to receive them. That being said, this is certainly out of some people's price point, but if you are able to purchase this, this is definitely a absolutely phenomenal weapon. But again, you have to like the M9 battery of arms, and you have to like uh, the double action system. But other than that, Phenomenal gun, and obviously Langdon has proved that himself. If you're unfamiliar with that guy, he's a pretty pretty legendary competitive shooter and in the tactical world as well. He's an absolutely excellent marksman, and uh, it's no surprise that he created something like this. The only cons I can really think of are, are honestly really gonna be the price, and overall, a double action system, which most people, you know, nowadays, the, the striker fired, uh, polymer frame pistol people that just grew up with Glock and don't know anything else. And in reality, that's that's a good way to go. I mean, the PDP is a phenomenal gun with a phenomenal trigger, and it's it's a third this price. Uh, the VP9 is in there as well. And there's a lot of cheaper options than something like this. But this looks good, it's reliable, it's accurate, and it's unbelievably fast. So I'm definitely gonna have to give it my seal of approval. But again, a little bit biased because I do absolutely love the M9. It's a classic gun. All the, all the fucking Jean-Claude Van Damme movies in the 80s and 90s, uh, Steven Seagal, uh, Sylvester Sloan, Arnold Schwarzenegger, pick a person, pick an action star, and they've used one of these guns in one of those movies. And if you're a fan of the iconic silhouette, you know, the whole Die Hard thing, but you want it to perform like a modern day staccato, this is it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.